Okay, today we are going to read a book called The Doctor with an Eye for Eyes, the story of Dr. Patricia Bath. We're going to use this book to help us practice making inferences. The Doctor with an Eye for Eyes was written by Julia Finley Mosca, illustrated by Daniel Riley. If you like to think big, but some say you're too small, or they say you're too young or too slow or too tall, pay no mind to their doubts and just follow the path of one awesome inventor, Patricia E. Bath. On the 4th of November in Harlem, New York, one family, the Baths, got a gift from a stork. I'm going to make an inference here. I know that storks are used to talk about babies. And I see a picture of a baby and that says one family, the Baths, got a gift from a stork. So I infer that this gift that they're talking about in the book is Patricia when she was born. A baby, Patricia, quite clever was she. All the good she'd accomplished, the world would soon see. Now this girl from New York, she loved playing with boys. Her big brother, so thoughtful, shared all of his toys. Every hobby he had, she would copy, it's true. She said, anything boys can do, girls can do too. Yet the toy she loved most, she will never forget, was a gift from her mother, a chemistry set. Well, it got her to thinking, hey, science is neat. This new passion of hers, it just couldn't be beat. As she grew a bit older, she yearned to do more. With science, I'll help the world sick and the poor. And a friend of the family's, a doctor so swell, inspired the teen, I can be one as well. But doctors back then, most were men you will find. Still Patricia stood firm, that did not change her mind. See, her father was smart and a jack of all trades. He had taught her we're equal, all genders, all shades. Yes, her parents were thrilled, they encouraged her goal. They said nothing's off limits, no job, dream, or role. The Baths didn't have much, but were wise nonetheless. Education, they said, is the key to success. Now the problem with that, every nearby high school was only for white kids with money, not cool. So to high school by train, nothing stopped her, you see. And though most kids took four years, she finished in three. What next? Up to college, then medical school, where she found that her classmates were boys as a rule. And when girls weren't allowed to sit in the front row, Patricia said, phooey, that won't make me low. All those unfair restrictions did not bring her down. There were more pressing matters and no time to frown. A decision was due what her focus would be. I've been thinking, she said, I will help people see. Then she studied the eye as an eager intern. Treating hospital patients was what helped her learn. Through her work, she discovered there's something not right. Her black patients were blind two times more than the white. What has caused this to happen, she wanted to know. In locations like Harlem, where money is low, she came up with a plan, we must conquer this plight. 
the public, she said, must prioritize sight. With this mission in mind, the new doctor went west. At a school near the sea, she spread word of her quest. She was young, but her knowledge and skill made her wise. She taught hundreds of students to understand eyes. But it wasn't all cheery, some things she would fight, like the desk in a dungeon that barely had light. No, thank you, she said, I will need a new placement, cause nobody puts Dr. Bath in a basement. Well, she got that new desk, then she hit a grand slam when she started an eye doctor training program. She would lead it for years, and what makes that so sweet? She'd be the first woman to achieve such a feat. Do you think she stopped there? No sirree, she did not. All her goals to help people, she still had a lot. I will find better treatments for blindness, she swore. Straight to Europe she went, where she studied some more. In cities like Paris, she learned about lasers. These light beams, she said, will be little eye savers. She practiced for months. Oh, and one final mention, her research, it led her to make an invention. This tool she developed, a new laser probe, fixed the eyeballs of patients all over the globe. And because of her work, those without sight for years, like 15 or 20 or 30 more years, they could finally see, we should give her three cheers. Hooray, Dr. Bath, hooray, Dr. Bath, hooray, Dr. Bath. But wait, she did more. She created a place, a place to bring hope to the whole human race. Its motto is this, rich or poor, black or white, healthy vision's important, it's everyone's right. Now for all that she's done and the progress it brings, Dr. Bath is well known, she's accomplished great things. But applause for her work? Well, to her it seems strange. Fame was never her wish, what she wanted was change. Yes, that girl from New York with the chemistry set, who was born when most doctors were men, don't forget, grew to be quite a hero, but she'll never boast. It's her will to heal people that matters the most. So if helping the world seems too hard, you are wrong. If some say you can't do it, don't listen, be strong. Like Patricia, stay focused, push forward, shine bright, and you'll find all your dreams will be well within sight. Dear reader, begin each day by asking a question. Let the answer lead you to another question and you will discover that learning and knowledge are an infinite playground. Dr. Patricia Bath